Well, I've just re finished recording uh, my sermon. I realized I was supposed to do this introduction before, but it'll be a separate video, so here you go. I uh, just kind of want to talk about what the goal was for the sermon and the insights that I gleaned from Bishop Littleman's uh, vast amount of wisdom and knowledge and practical advice. Uh, so sort of the overarching uh, goal of this sermon was something that uh, the bishop said on the first day of class, uh, that one of the purposes of Christian preaching is to make Christianity difficult. Um, and he said, we want people to say, quote, I thought I knew Jesus until I heard that sermon. Uh, so one of my goals was to kind of set up um, this expectation that you thought I was going to go one way um, and then kind of flip it on its head uh, to say that you may think that you're the poor man, but in fact, you are the rich man. Um, so to kind of shake that preconceived notion that I think some of us have, um, especially in this stage of life, uh, I, I, I preach this sermon with uh, this class in mind. We're all uh, different, but in the same sort of stage of life. Uh, my guess is that there's not uh, too many people in here who are millionaires. I could be wrong. Uh, but my goal was to um, preach to that context and kind of flip what we would think uh, where you thought I was maybe going on its head. Uh, so three other things I'll say. Um, the first is that I really wanted to tell this story uh, that Jesus is teaching here is very in a story fashion. So I wanted to keep that sort of narrative flow, uh, which is very different for me as a good uh Protestant evangelical. I, I preach a lot from Paul um, and the epistles, so preaching from a parable was a little bit different. Um, so I tried to modernize the story, which is a strategy that I think we've talked about a little bit in this class, as well as the intro to preaching class, um, of just how we can use our modern language to keep the same message of the text, um, but make it more relatable, so to speak. So instead of talking about how he's dressed in uh, purple and fine linen, I said he has a custom Armani suit. Uh, just little things like that. So to that end, uh, this was the first time ever I've preached a sermon and not used um, a commentary, which was very scary for me. Um, but I really tried to see what is this text saying to me, which we've talked about as well, that that's I don't know if this is class or the other preaching class, but um, how people want to hear, well, what is this text saying to you? Um, so the second thing kind of uh, along those lines is that I wanted to um, break the expectations that we had. Uh, so Bishop Willeman talks about in peculiar speech, the difference between pre-baptismal preaching and post-baptismal preaching. Uh, and I think when we read this text from Luke 16, we, at least the first time I read it, I said, well, yeah, this rich man just hasn't been baptized yet. Uh, that's his deal. That's why he's burning in Hades, wherever that is. Um, and so we, we, we read it as, a, I read it as a picture of heaven and hell and salvation. Um, and so I, I, I tried to preach it as, uh, I know, hopefully all of you are baptized, and, and as a reminder to say, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, that when we are dunked in water or uh, sprinkled with water, that we don't automatically enter into Abraham's bosom, that we still have work yet to do. Uh, and the last thing is that I really wanted um, this to be a concrete sermon. I know Bishop Willeman is very anti, uh, here's eight ways that Jesus can make you happy. Uh, but at the same time, I think that preaching needs to convey some sort of way that people can live differently. Uh, if we just stand up and talk and say, see you later, um, and the people are just kind of left contemplating, then they we, we don't really know where to go. Um, so I wanted to give something concrete, uh, which was really kind of... Uh, against what uh, Pascarello talks about, how uh, we how bad moralism is in preaching. Um, but my goal is for any sermon is to, to let it keep preaching even after I say amen. Um, so when I talk about reality shows at the beginning, uh, when I talk about parking garages and football tickets, my hope is that uh, next time you go through a, a parking garage or turn on the TV and see Keeping Up with the Kardashians, that you'll think, uh, oh yeah, I'm the rich guy. Uh, there's some gates in my life. There's some uh, barriers that I've put up between me and some other people, and I might need to think about breaking them down. So that's why I, I gave really culturally relevant examples, I hope, um, to, to kind of trigger you later on to maybe think back to, to this lesson. Um, and also in that move uh, from what Bishop talks about in Proclamation and Theology, uh, to move from a memory of what God has done to a statement of our present responsibility before God. Uh, and that's what I did in, in remembering the gospel and in remembering uh, what Jesus has done from us to not just create that remembering act, but then say, how do we go as Christians and live differently in light of this very challenging text?